Thank you to Dossier for sponsoring today's video and more on them later on. So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be doing a compilation video. This is definitely a top favorite on this channel. So I'm back to be giving y'all more content. We have some really good stories. These are super trendy as well as very shocking with a lot of the discussion that can be driven about all of these topics. On the docket tonight, we have Sean Diddy Combs back in the blogs for being exposed with video footage of him putting his hands and feet on Cassie Ventura. Now this is really no shocker because all of the allegations that have come out over the past like nine months, the lawsuits, the speculations, even digging back into history to pull out receipts of things that he did or was involved in. But it is still very shocking to see the actual physical proof and evidence of his malicious and very violent nature. I'm going to issue a trigger warning on this story because it's dealing with DV. Next story, Clay from Love is Blind season six has basically come out booed up, laid up, and snuggled up with adult film star Selena Powell. I have so much to say about this. From the way how Clay behaved on Love is Blind to some of his aftermath to what people tried to excuse him for as well as hold him accountable for, this was utterly shocking. And it's not too many things that shock me when it comes to public figures and influencers and reality TV stars and things of that nature, but this one definitely had my mouth dropped open. And then lastly, Instagram influencer and business entrepreneur Jada Chivas gets called out for copying a fashion designer's swimsuit design basically to the T. Jada is set to launch a swim line and she wanted to include this flowery bikini design and it's super cute but whole time though the designer she stole it from paid her to promote it years ago and Jada took it upon herself to try to relaunch it now and received a heap of backlash for this. I think fashion is truly dying and a lot of these influencers are really not as creative as people think they are. So y'all know what to do. Number your comments story number one, two, or three. I try to read all of the comments and I think people think I'm lying when I say that but I do try to read all of them. I love a good conversation. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So our first story is about Instagram influencer and business entrepreneur Jada Chivas, also known as Jada Weda. She's currently 26 years old and she's from Savannah, Georgia. Jada got her start basically as a social media fashionista dating all the way back to 2013, if not before. I remember seeing Jada on Twitter back in the day and she's really grown to a huge popular face in urban media and urban fashion. Of course, some people think that she's most known for her relationship with rap superstar Lil Baby and maybe that's how you found out about her but she has been relevant and popular long before that and especially in the beauty world. So it's not far-fetched for her to have her own hands in businesses and fashion, beauty, skincare, makeup, you name it. And I do like seeing a lot of these young black individuals making a name for themselves and being able to see career and financial success in whichever endeavors they decide to do. However, what's true is that a lot of these influencers do take from other people and are very unoriginal. I honestly think a lot of them pick designs that are already out there and then remake them through their Asian based vendors and warehouses just to repackage it and sell it for a marked up price that is a lot of times way higher than what it's worth. I mean we had Kylie Jenner be called out for her swim line being super cheap and not what was advertised and we never heard about it again. If you notice Kylie never ever decided to relaunch or make a new version to her swim line because of the deep backlash that she got the last time. I also feel like Kylie Jenner is scrambling for an industry to stick in hence why we've been bombarded with a lot of different products and lines from her but we're not talking about that. So Jada posted that she's going to be launching a new swim collection and specifically this bikini that has this 3D flower design and looks like some ruffling or this woven pattern on the top and bottom. And honestly, it's cute. I would actually wear that. And if it was just her original idea, I think I would consider buying it. However, when she made a post about this, a friend of the original designer decided to expose Jada with the following tweets. The friend says, it's a shame that my friend worked so hard for business for years just for Jada Weda to steal her whole-ish design after she was paid to wear and post my friend's bikini. Weirdo flex. She continues and says, my friend was making these swimsuits by hand while in nursing school. It never gave dummy or rapper baby mama. You know our swim been having motion. This is what Jada posted today talking about production for wait a minute. Girl really weird as hell. And as I can see here, this is literally the exact design from the original designer. It's been in production. You can even say they had a prototype and then a final version comparing one of Jada's friends and then the one that Jada is wearing in this picture. So to be honest, it's a direct reflection of somebody else's creative idea. Continuing on, she says, after seeing that post, I went to her page today and she still has the pickup wearing my friend's bikini, but she removed the business page tag. So a lot of people chimed in and that's one thing I do like about Twitter and just social media is that you can always get answers, responses, or a boatload of opinions on different topics. It's like a blessing and a curse. 
because it's all good and dandy until it's about you. I literally dread the day that I say something or post something and I become the talk of Twitter for 24 hours and everyone is on my head about something. I'll think I just have to shut off my phone if that ever happens. But people were just saying things like, it's so often that influencers do this and it's very true. I mean, most of the stuff that we see with these bigger entities, whether they're influencers or full blown companies, are direct ripoffs of independent fashion designers. Between Fashion Nova and Shein, they've been called out so many times for ripping off other people's work. And I also recall how many times the Kardashians have been called out for the same thing. I mean, that family is notorious for not having original ideas and taking designs that are exactly the same as creatives and then launching them to their bigger audiences for profit. And I guess my question is, if all of these people consider themselves monarchs in the beauty industry, how is it so hard for them to come up with something original? Like I get if you're just selling jeans or if you're just selling lingerie, there's only so many things you can do with that. But if you're actually someone trying to sell different pieces with different designs, graphic t-shirts, and just avant-garde clothing, if you consider yourself someone who can dress or someone who is really into fashion, how hard is it for you to really do that? The real answer is, they're not really that immersed into the skill of designing clothes. And I feel like this is why I have a degree in the arts because a lot of it is based off of your original ideas and coming up with unique ways to express your art. It truly is a skill and I feel like the arts get so disrespected and society feels as if if they don't know who the original creator is, it's up for grabs by anyone. And that's just truly not fair. So Jada gets wind of the backlash that she was getting and she decides to respond. And what she said, was full blown malarkey. Now, as I've gotten older, I try to be like way nicer because I've been through a lot. And with age, I think maturity and understanding just grows. But I still have to consider her a burr brain girl for what she said. I'm sorry. Someone calls her out on Snapchat and says, ooh, Jada, you wrong. Why are they pulling receipts of you stealing this from someone you was paid to do promo for? I love you, but come on. And I love the yellow swimsuit, but why, Jay? So Jada says, oh, it's no shade. The girl I promoted back in 2020 was on the mood board for this summer swim. That's what fashion is, about remaking and recreating. It's no shit at all. I never take offense when I'm on somebody's mood board. It's how it go. And um, Jada, what do you mean that fashion is essentially about repurposing other people's ideas? That's not fashion. That's plagiarism. And it's very illegal. I know it takes time and money, but I do encourage people who are in the creative space or arts world to try to patent and trademark a lot of what you do so that if and when this does happen, you are legally protected. Because at least in America, if you don't have legal ownership over something, even if it is a design, really anybody can take it. What makes it even more disrespectful on Jada's behalf is the fact that the original designer paid her back in 2020 to promote her bikini and Jada did take the picture and post it and then since she decided that she's going to be selling the same item, she untagged the original designer so it looks like this was just a design that she had in the vault or something she came up with herself. That is so outright disrespectful and it just shows the character that not only she has but I think a lot of people have. It's very entitled that you have a larger audience and then you can take what somebody else put their blood, sweat, and tears into and repackage it to your audience. And it does happen a lot, like I've said. So the original designer gets wind of all of this and says, during my time in nursing school, I launched my own business to fund my nursing education. In June 2019, I co-founded You Noir Swim and introduced our handmade flower bomb bathing suit. Later in July 2020, I reached out to Lawanda, Jada Wada's manager, to propose Jada wearing our bathing suit and we settled on a payment of $4,000 for her to showcase it in August 2020. Lawanda Wanda, her manager, confirmed via phone that she would wear it during her vacation in Turks with Lil Baby in September 2020. We kept in touch through messages and emails regarding the delivery and wearing of the bathing suit. Then Jada wore it. She tagged our Instagram and her post and IG story. I continued to communicate with her about future arrangements and provided samples and design concepts for her to wear in 2021. However, she expressed her focus on launching her own brand. By June 2021, we initiated the process of copywriting the bathing suit for legal protection. Despite having numerous influencers and celebrities endorsing our flower bomb bathing suit, it is disheartening to address the situation where hardworking women are taken advantage of by influencers who mimic our original work. Stay tuned for summer 2024. So all I think is that this is just another example of the bigger person, the larger entity, the bigger brands, the more popular or famous individual being able to cut corners with their work. So Jada posted an apology DM that she sent to the original designer and this is what she had to say. She says, hi, I just wanna say that I am very sorry about all of this. I realize you weren't selling the bikinis anymore since 2021, so I didn't think it would be a big deal since there's plenty other brands with that same concept. Girl, bye. I definitely understand how this made you feel because I've been a victim of things like this before.
girl, <laughs> what? And I'd hate to not go about this the right way without taking the accountability as a black female business owner as well. I say all that to say I will not be selling the swimsuit that was inspired by your company. Wish you and your brand the best and much success. Maybe one day we can collaborate on something even hotter. XOXO, sorry again. So Jada claims that now the swimsuit is not going to be within her next collection and basically I think she's only sorry because she got caught. Like I do like that she took accountability but I just don't think this would have happened had she not been called out for it. And there were people defending this saying that Shein and Fashion Nova do the same thing and if they were Jada they would have still sold it because at the end of the day a lot of people will see something that is super expensive on one designer's page or even if it's a luxury designer but then go get the knockoff version. And I get that but I think this is different. This was just full blown direct plagiarism and the fact that Jada had worked with the brand and was paid by them to promote the exact same design in the past just for her to try to make money off of that that's why this is an issue here. I feel like Jada could have just collaborated because if the girl said that she doesn't sell it anymore she could have been able to revive that and collaborate with Jada. But the entitlement and the me 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 attitude is the problem and it's sad because I feel like a lot of influencers don't realize that you'll get more brownie points as a business and as an individual if you can just show selflessness by working with people who are smaller than you or who are up and coming and really working hard at their own brands. Not everyone is going to get the same platform as Jada Weta so it would have been nice to see her do that. And not that she has to but I feel like that would have been an easy solution versus copping out because she was getting a whole bunch of backlash. But she did deserve it and I'm at least happy that the other designer is getting a lot more exposure off of this situation and I think it was a learning lesson for Jada when it comes to business especially in the arts world you have to be original and give credit where it is due. Now before we move on let's introduce today's sponsor which is Dossier. So hey y'all today's video is sponsored by Dossier and I am glad and honored to be working with them again. This time we have something a little bit different and that is Dossier's candles. I love love candles like if you ever want to give me anything that you'll know I'll love it's definitely a candle and particularly one from Dossier. So I received three candles. Let's take a look. First up is for sure my favorite one, which is Ambery Vanilla, which Amber and Vanilla are my two favorite scents. The notes are really good. We have some cedar wood, some jasmine, and obviously vanilla. This was very warm and cozy, and I would say it's like bougie and romantic at the same time. Definitely a perfect match for me. Next up is Aromatic Star Anise. Some of the notes are pepper, nutmeg, and patchouli. It says it's inspired by Dior's Savage Eau de Toilette, and it is. My brother and my dad love Dior fragrances, and this scent gives exactly that. So I will be passing this to one of them because although candles are unisex, this is definitely giving strong, educated black man who wears a suit Monday through Friday. I can definitely see the men grabbing this one and enjoying it. Lastly, I received Floral Marshmallow and the name alone tells you it's really good. Some of the notes are Marshmallow, of course, Honeysuckle, and it has an amber and vanilla base, so you know I love it. It's very, very light, but you can still smell it. So for those of you who do not like to be overwhelmed with fragrance, you'll love this. It reminds me of a soft, fresh, newborn baby like I don't know but it's soft and powdery and for the people who like light fresh scents this one is for you. Now it would be remiss of me if I didn't showcase this new Dossier original. This is a fragrance that is a part of their Speak Easy collection. It is called Smoky Mezcal and Cucumber. It's a unisex fragrance that is watery hence the cucumber and then also smoky with some dry tones in there. I'm gonna call this one the Great Gatsby. It smells timeless, rich, and a little outdoorsy and it's cool that I got to try something that is a little bit out of my usual taste but I'm really impressed by Dossier's original collections. So y'all, if you're interested in these candles or fragrance, you can check the description box and the pinned comment for the direct link to Dossier's website. They also have an app that you can download as well. Dossier makes very affordable fragrances that can be worn to upscale events and also day-to-day -day life as well. They have products for the ladies and the fellas to keep you smelling your very best all day long. So as always, thank you to Dossier for sponsoring this video. Our next story is about Clay from Love is Blind being posted up with adult film star Selena Powell. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this one shocked the hell out of me because I couldn't believe that someone who was so anal and distinct about why he couldn't be with another woman would drop his standards so low to be associated with someone who brings nothing but negativity, promiscuity, and just bad vibes. And I do think there are times where Selena Powell was stating things about the reality of the industry and because of her reputation, it wasn't taken that seriously. But I also feel like overall, this is a grown woman who knows what she's doing and she gets a rise out of being controversial. So thing one and thing two decided to make these very cringy TikToks. Let's take a look. I think I like this little life. This little life. I think I like this little life. Well, let's bring him out. Here's Eric Cartman. Yeah! Whatever, whatever. Well, let's bring him out. Here's Eric Cartman. Yeah! 
I'm not playing with you. I want my eggs cracked, meaning I want a child. I want my name dropped, meaning I want to be married. I'm not around with you. So I save you if you say I was over love that I had enough, then I found you. Oh, I was so I saw this on Twitter, and after seeing it, I was literally like, S. M H. Like that's all I could say. And it was for many reasons. I posted this on my Twitter, but I also commented this on Instagram where I got a lot of good engagement and said, Clay, this truly wasn't on my bingo card, but it's interesting how quote unquote standards are changed and severed when the look of the woman is different. Interesting. And the reason why I say this is because on the show Love is Blind, I feel like Clay gaslit AD, which again was his co-star and ex-fiance of the show, to be a whole bunch of different things or to question her in so many different ways in order for him to be convinced but then to tie your name to the brand of a woman who looks a certain way has a certain reputation and is really the complete opposite of ad i find that to be interesting there was a lot of people calling clay a colorist upon the completion of the last season of the show and i said that i didn't think he was colorist and i actually defended him on that i just said i don't think that he liked ad as a black girl and i don't know if i could say that he was colorist but i definitely think he has a certain type that is more palatable for him to drop his standards so maybe he is and and that's the thing there's black men that like black women but there are a lot of black men too that if a black woman isn't above and beyond on the standards whether it's looks career respect the way how she carries herself and so forth they don't want anything to do with that black woman that's why my last video talking about black athletes dating black women and clay was a college athlete who ran track i said that the standards are moved for non-black women when it comes to black men dating them i have never dropped a video where the comments actually pissed me off but there were so many people that said why are we having this conversation in 2024. And I was disappointed with a lot of y'all because the reason why is the conversation is still relevant. I was never asking anybody to choose me. I was never telling anybody who to date. I was never mad at anybody for their dating choice. Like, let's be honest. Like, that was so annoying to see because it's like, come the hell on. All I was saying is that there are so many different standards that black men place on non-black women in order for them to be courted and taken seriously by them. But more than not, black women have to jump through more hoops to be viewed in a certain way before she is acceptable. And I was really only talking about men of means not really your average black guy so to ad who clay questioned her career her exes her friends her finances her everything he questioned all of that but he doesn't question how selena powell whether it's innocent or intentional can play in the downfall of the social reputation that he's already created for himself so ad who maybe she does have things to work on but has a more respectable approach to her social welfare is to clay incapable of being married definitely got embarrassed on television and showed loyalty and perseverance with Clay through all of his self-proclaimed weaknesses such as his inability to be loyal and his dedication to their engagement, that wasn't good enough for him to marry her. It's irresponsible of me to say yes in this time when I'm not ready to give you 100% and you wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want me saying yes and being half-assed with marriage. You wouldn't want that. And I'm saying I'm not ready for that. Like I'm, I'm feeling bad because I see you crying, it's hurting me. It was a game time decision for me. I want to reconsider everything. And it's just for me to say off oh, a great two weeks, this is what this is gonna be my wife forever. I could not make that decision to you today. And it's just breaks my heart seeing you like this because I love you, I really do. It's like, me saying no was not to you, AD, like, I'm not ready. But Selena Powell, who has a completely negative connotation surrounding her name through the entire industry, whether it be her being an adult film star, telling people's business, sleeping with men who are taken, and so forth, doing TikToks with her or just surrounding himself with her is no big deal. So I hope y'all understand why I made the video about the black athletes choosing non-black women. Because all of the suggestions and a lot of the men were underneath my comment section saying that black women don't hold black men down and black women are not willing to put in the work and black women always wait until a man is wealthy to get with him and black women are not ride or die black women act ratchet black women are not good for their image and black women don't know how to be quiet or be feminine and in most cases black women are everything but a child of god so why is it that non-black women get picked over them for these so-called desired spectacles of black men in certain industries but this black man is choosing to at the very least associate with an adult film star who is multiracial of some sort over ad who was an nfl cheerleader is a real estate agent speaks very clearly keeps herself up has a great body she's educated and some more and it's not really just about a race thing i'm just saying the optics have to be there a lot of people don't want to make it about race and skin color but i think that's being naive you do have to look at that when we're talking about what attracts somebody to something like do y'all now see why i made that video just to say i don't like the excuse just say you don't like black women and keep it pushing that's all i want to hear because clay just proved my example so clearly that he can be quick to associate with a certain type of woman 
and because of her look and because she's not black and he will accept any bare minimum from her but a black woman who has her stuff together is so called not good enough. It doesn't make any sense and it's very hypocritical. So I'm not even mad about this. I just think Clay is a clout chaser. I think he wanted to be famous. When Clay said he didn't watch Love is Blind so he didn't understand the context of the show before he got on it. I do not believe him. I think he's very intentional. He knows certain trigger words and how to speak to an audience. He's basically like a likable villain because he's smooth talking, but he trips himself up because he'll say one thing and then do another. Clay, I'm glad your mother checked you. She came out with a statement about all of this and said, happy new day. First, my number one rule for folks following me on social media, don't send me any inappropriate videos. I'm not going to call you out. However, you know who you are. Second, I didn't know who CP was until everyone started Started sending me her YouTube information. It's very interesting that some men will lose everything thinking that the apple is good, but it's a forbidden choice do better. The deceiver uses old tricks to attack and destroy. Clayton Alexander, you know Jesus will allow things to occur. He's still trying to get your attention. Please surrender to him. In closing, I pray that everyone reading this gives the same attention to other things that matter, like helping support your local food banks and volunteering your local communities. Tap link in my bio. I pray that everyone has a wonderful day on purpose. Signed, Straight Shooter. And I know that's right, mama. I like a mom, especially a black mother who holds her son accountable because oftentimes we see a lot of mothers enabling their black sons to be the same despicable man that either did them dirty or is just not a good person. Clay is embarrassing and I feel like whatever centimeter of positive or likable social popularity he may have had left is now gone. In order to make it in the entertainment world you have to be likable and on the surface Clay looks decent and he's somewhat likable because he knows how to speak well and he doesn't come off like your average black man or the degenerate black man but he's literally a wolf in sheep's clothing. I think a lot of people have tuned off of him really because of this situation so I hope making those unfunny TikToks was worth it to Clay because his excuses and how much he moved the needle for another woman just to do what he did here makes him look so corny. So our third and last story is about Diddy. Now this one I have to say there's a trigger warning because we're talking about domestic violence and assault. Now of course Diddy has been in the news since the end of 2023 about many egregious things from allegations of violence to his involvement in nefarious activities dealing with underage women and I guess men as well and questions about his sexuality and overall cross-checking his character over the reign of his career. Since the 90s, Sean P. Diddy Combs has been a mogul in hip-hop, basically creating some of the biggest stars to ever touch this genre and being behind their success or even their demise. There have been many rappers in hip-hop and R&B groups that have come and gone under the Bad Boy Records label and Sean P. Diddy Combs has been behind all of this. But we are at a point where the expose on his entire persona and his career and business dealings have been outed to the world. Most recently, his biggest victim, which is Cassie Ventura, who has really opened up a can of worms for this man after suing him in a civil suit back in November 2023. Everything is really just crashing down for Diddy, but I'm here for it. So most recently, there was video footage released of Diddy assaulting Cassie. Now, I'm not gonna play the video for the sake of YouTube, but he can be seen pushing, shoving, kicking, stomping, and basically treating her like a bug or a roach, just the scum on the ground. And this is a human being as well as a woman who was smaller than him, not as strong as him. And I think what a lot of people are forgetting is that Cassie is supposed to be Diddy's girlfriend during all of this. This is supposed to be his lover. He's supposed to protect her. He's supposed to worship her or at the very least just show that he cares so much that any harm or malpractice or disrespect that goes her way, it should not be coming from him. He is literally the epicenter of all of the disgusting actions that this woman has gone through ever since she met him at the age of 19. I think these age gap dynamics and relationships are really a concern because although Although it may be legal, oftentimes there are ulterior motives when somebody is 10 plus years your junior or your senior. And it comes from both ends. But I think in this case where money, power, fortune, fame, and all of these things are involved, there can never be a clear, innocent, and genuine reason for why someone is dating a woman who was literally a teenager when they got together. To see a video of Diddy doing what he did to her, there is no excuse. And there's also the confirmation of everything that people say that he has done, he has done it. I couldn't believe that there were questions about this still after the lawsuit after the pictures after people coming out that were actually close to him like security guards and road managers and anyone hired by bad boys back in the day can attest to his evil character that video was 
so triggering because I've been in that position, but also because you can see the narcissism that he had where he tried to deny certain allegations to make it seem like he's a good person. When he tried to change his name from Puffy or Diddy to now be called Brother Love, when he tried to post as if he's just this big family man who cares about his kids and his daughters and all of these things, it is a complete contradiction to the imagery that he's been trying to put out to the public. And I think he just needs to start taking everything on the chin. The faster he's accountable, the faster that he can be seen as what he is and just fall into oblivion and just live a life where people will shun him, but at least he can enjoy his riches to himself and not bother anyone anymore. He comes out with this an apology and I guess rightfully so, the internet was on his neck. From the people who never liked him from day one to some of us younger folks who didn't really know the extent of what Sean Diddy Combs was, now we know. And even certain men who were in his corner co-signing all of this nonsense all of these years have turned their backs on him and dragged him for this type of physical violence towards Cassie. And I'm sure we know there are other victims or survivors, so I think believing what people have said, whether it's an allegation or a full-blown fact that is proven, the general public is not feeling Diddy and never will. So here's what he had to say. I was up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. All in all, I ain't trying to hear none of that. I don't really care about somebody apologizing for something that they tried to deny, but now they've been caught. Now they have some type of empathy. Now they're disgusted by their actions. Now it's inexcusable. It was that a long time ago. The hotel video of him assaulting her is from 2016. It has been eight years since this happened and Diddy has been the exact same man that he was all of this time. What I don't understand is when it comes to all of these people in Hollywood and entertainment, how come there's not a practice or a commonality of people being good people? Where in Hollywood does it say that everyone must be evil, everyone must be selfish, everyone must be violent, everybody must be predatory, everybody must be volatile in order to be who they are? Where are the people who didn't sell their soul? Where are the people who are actually nice? Like it's just scary but also intriguing that in order for a lot of these people to get on and be who they are, they're involved in so many things that makes you apprehensive to be in that line of work. Even though we see it as very glitz and glam, until recently we've seen a lot of things in the industry have been exposed. Diddy could have been the hero. He he could have been the ethical leader who has millions if not billions of dollars but also had put on for a lot of different entertainers in rap hip-hop and r&b and even pop and been that mogul behind it with a great reputation who everyone respects but he chose to take the road less followed or maybe the road more followed and be this tyrant that has placed a lot of people in agony hurt pain and a bunch of other things at this point his reputation is done for i've done enough videos of him up to this point to say that it is completely over he will never be able to recover from this there is no amount of pr statements money videos photo ops anything that can be done to erase people's minds on how he is and who he is i do hope to see more lawsuits that expose the reality of diddy people are saying all of this esoterical stuff about how he may have pissed off the wrong person and now all of his skeletons are coming out i just think that now is his time and everything good comes to an end and there was nothing ever good so whatever was done in the dark will always come to the light and the light is here he needs to be in jail and if he escapes jail time in any of this at the very least I'm glad that his career, his reputation, his reign of power has now come to a close. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go stream all of my songs. They are all on streaming. We have Afrobeats coming out this summer. Stay tuned. I will be previewing something within the next month or so. And lastly, do not forget to follow me on all of my social media networks. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, y'all. Whatever I say, y'all gotta do on who on you on who on you on all hail the queen QC. Yeah, she is risen. Presence is a gift, so I come with the ribbon. Internet told me stop rapping, I ain't listen to him. No, I really got more bars in the prison system. Right, yeah, one beat step into the kitchen. Murder flows, you can suspect I am not the victim. Be queen, D's on that bitch like we with the pistons. Red cherry, red bottoms, I know how to pick them. Always got a secret plan, I don't do the fighting. Shorty is a secret fan, yeah, she ghost riding. Brown skin beauty with a booty show time. Go off on the tangent, I don't need a cosign. So baddies with me that I treat. About a dozen uh -huh. hot girls straight up out the microwave oven. Gotta bring a chicken man before you get to stuffing. And this beat going crazy, snapping on percussion. Chama at the top, I'm the number one prospect. Uh -huh. Beat from Lakia when she slid on Cosmic. Tell him coming here, boo, I'm trying to make your jaw stick. I got no pics, but I wanna see your pockets. Big glossy lips, trying them out like a faucet. Uh -huh. Beat chicken knees, so I put them in a cockpit. Cooking in the studio, call me Dirty Crockett. Gingerbread baby running fast like Sonic. It's commendable, was a ceremony, but now it's a festival. New money now, so you gotta move a decimal. Presidential suite, and it's looking all congressional. I'm so delectable for your queen card, cause mine is a collectible. Better mind your business and stay up off my genitals. Probably make them high, cause my body's like an edible. Wait, let me stop, cause I'm trying to be professional. Damn.
know that's what y'all said when you heard that verse. <laughs> y'all was like, damn. <laughs> Respectfully, though. We on Victoria Island Like a gullah gullah sun on my melanin Working on my color color bubble gum pink bitch You are like hubba bubba need my check Friday I'm calling you a mora soca She make me baby I'm so fine I done wine be sweet like palm wine Now when you get lay come say hi I sit so baby no be long time Go dumb on the beat but I'm chilling with the smarty guys Melanin militia on go on with the army wise Pull up with the fan he gotta go now it's starry skies Big body bad black girl I'm looking party size Breathe out Breathe in through your nose through your mouth Take it easy. Breathe in Breathe out, man, I gotta kiss my breath. Breathe out through your mouth. Uh, waste be thrown on my body.